This calculus course is really testing my limits. <laughs> that makes me so happy. So let's look at increasing and decreasing functions. We've been looking at derivatives and what to do with them, and we've been you know, finding gradients of tangent lines, but it turns out now we can also tell where a function increases and where it decreases. That might be useful to know. So let's just uh, give you a little quick reminder there. Uh, what do I mean by going up a hill? I mean, uh, if it's going, like as you walk from left to right, if you've got a graph, as you walk from left to right, so in other words, if you're going this way, if you're going up a hill, we say it's increasing. If something is down a hill, let's say it's going like this right here, we say it's decreasing. So this is the, the key idea here. Really, this is kind of the, I think this is really it. This is what you need. Now remember that f prime is the derivative, which is the gradient, and so yeah, this is all related, right? Because this is all related to slopiness or like how steep this is. So a little pro tip, like I said, is that I just imagine I'm walking from left to right, and that tells me everything I need to know. So if I'm you know going up a hill, then its you know derivative is positive. It's an increasing function. I might be going down a hill. I might be flat. Then I know the derivative is zero, and so on. So this is the, the main concept. Let's see if we can apply this. So for increasing function, so let's say something like, uh, let me just give an example here. I don't know, let's say something that, um, maybe it's maybe it's kind of wobbly, maybe it goes like this, like whoa, like this. Some sort of weird function like this. Do you see the graph that as you walk to the right, aren't you still going up a hill? You may be going up a hill instead of other weird ways here. This is not supposed to be flat. I guess I should have made it maybe a little bit less. Maybe I'll make it like this. Like that, maybe. Just so you know, it doesn't have to be a straight line. It could be a curve. But you notice it's always going uphill, no matter what. When I walk to the right, I'm always going up a hill. I just imagine like this is me walking, right? If I'm walking, I'm going up a hill all the time. Always. If I'm going up the hill, that means the derivative, so watch carefully, I'm going to write it like this. The derivative, so f prime of x, will be greater than zero. That's what I say, right? That's when my, because it's got a positive gradient. So that's what it means there. If it's got a negative gradient, maybe I got some graph that goes, I don't know, maybe something like this, like like that. Aren't I always going down a hill? Like as I'm actually walking here, I don't know why my head got so big there, but oh well. As I'm, you know, walking to the right, I'm always going down a hill. So I could say that f prime of x is less than zero, because it's negative. So if my gradient is negative, I'm going down a hill. If my gradient is positive, I'm going up a hill. And that's the key things I needed to know. This is really, conceptually, we have it. This is all we need. So let's see if we can apply this to an example. I think that might be useful. So uh, let's go ahead. We got this one, <laughs> never drink and derive. Oh God, I hate myself. Um, so for the function f of x equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x minus five, let's look at where it's increasing and decreasing. Now there's some ways of doing it. We could find the derivative and find out where that's equal to or greater or neg negative, things like that. I've got some other videos where I'll show you how to do this by hand. But I think the important thing is just to, let's try to maybe just do a sketch of this graph. Maybe that's the best thing to do. So I'll do it with my calculator. So let's see, this would be x, this would be y. And let's see if we can graph this bad boy here. So I'm gonna get on my calculator, say give me a graph here. And I want 2 times x cubed. Then I want plus 3x squared minus 12x minus 5. Boom, goes something like this, which is a bit of a mess, but oh well. Uh, let me maybe change my window a little bit. So I'll do change my window. You know what I'll do? I'll just zoom out. If that'll help. Yeah, I've almost got it, don't I? If I go like this here, I'm just going to move it a little bit. I can sort of see the peaks. Um, so you notice then it's sort of at minus one or minus two here it looks like. And over here it's at probably at one. Now I don't care about the actual heights. I actually don't care about those so much. So I'm gonna just go ahead and sketch somewhat what it looks like. This is like, uh, I don't know, maybe something like, like this and like that. I don't know, something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to have a, a really rough sketch. Because I do know though that this value here was at one, this value here was at minus two. And if I'm not sure, I can always go ahead and find them. Watch carefully, I'll do that on my calculator. I wanna know like where is the maximum? It turns out that might be an important point to know. 
So I could, I can go to analyze and I can say give me the maximum and I do a left pound and a right pound and it tells me it's at minus two. Now the height is 15, but I actually don't care. I just know the X value is minus two. So okay, good. And let's do the same thing again for the other one. So I'll do um, analyze graph, give me the minimum this time from this to this and hopefully, yeah, look, it's at X equals one. So you notice then I've got it what I needed. It's not even to scale. Do you notice this is minus two? It looks like almost the same length as this, but it doesn't matter. That's good enough. What matters is that this right here, this peak happens at minus two, and this right here happens at one. Now, when is it increasing? Well, remember, increasing, what that means. Maybe I'll do this in a different color. I'll do increasing. Maybe I'll say that'll be like this here. It means that when it goes up a hill, right? That's when f prime of x, whoops, I'll write like this. I'll say, f prime of x is greater than zero. When is that? When am I going up a hill? Does it make sense it's anywhere here up until this point right here? Because at this point it's not going up a hill, it's flat. So here I'm going up a hill. I'm also going up a hill anywhere here. Does that make any sense? Like anywhere here. So how do I define that then? Well, I can say it's increasing. All right, let's see. Let's write that down now. In other words, I can say f prime of x is greater than zero when? Well, it's anything at minus two and to the left of it. So I can say that. I can say x is less than minus two. Now I can also say x is greater than uh, one. There we go. I've defined where it's increasing. So there we go, that's done. Um, now let's take a look at when it's decreasing. Let's look at that one. So maybe I'll do that in a different color. Maybe I'll do that in, uh, I don't know, green. Let's see. So when is it decreasing? That's when f prime of x is less than zero. That's when I'm going down a hill. Do you notice I'm going down a hill, basically between here and here? Here's where I'm going down a hill. So here is where f prime of x is less than zero. All right, these other points are here. Here is where f prime of x was greater than zero. Here is where f prime of x was also greater than zero. So by this logic then, does it make sense? I can say decreasing. In other words, when f prime of x is less than zero, is, let's see, it's anywhere between x equals minus two and one. So I'll put a minus two here, I'll put a one here, and I'll literally put my x in the middle. And I just put the little crocodiles like this way, that way it's x is bigger than minus two, but it's less than one. That's an elegant way to write it in sort of set notation like that. There we go. It turns out I'm done. That's how we solved this. So to see with a calculator, you still have to use your calculator. You still have to be a little bit clever about it. You have to find the maximum and the minimum because you need to know that because those are the places where it's not increasing or decreasing. Now, of course, you can do lots of other things with the derivative. Okay, this is like a little pro tip here. You can do things like finding the maximum and the minimum. You could have actually done this by hand. You could have figured out this x is minus 2 by hand here. All you'd have to do, if you think carefully about it, the derivative tells you the gradient, right? Well, think about this. At the bottom here, isn't the gradient equal to zero? Isn't it flat? So you would find your derivative and set it equal to zero. Turns out if you do that, you'll probably get two solutions. You'll get minus two and one. So I can show you that in another video, but just so you know, you could actually have found these values by hand if you needed to. I just cheated and showed you with a calculator. But you could actually, by hand, you could have found, let me just maybe show you here. You could have actually said, um, you could have said, let me find f primed of x first. So you'd say, all right, that's uh, 6x squared, let's see, plus 6x minus 12. I'll set that equal to 0, because at a maximum, that's what happens here. At a maximum, that's 0. And by the way, I could divide them all by uh, 6, so I'd have like x squared plus x minus 2. I would factorize that. Turns out that factorizes to x plus two. Let's see what else, and x minus one equals zero. And then, hey, look at that, the x value of two, two would make it work. Oh, no, minus two, sorry. Minus two would make that work. And x equals one would make that work. So just so you know, we didn't have to do it that way because we're not there yet, but you could have. You could have actually done it by hand. I cheated, I just said, let's use a calculator to find us the maximum and the minimum. But just so you know, derivatives can help you with even maxes and mins to find out where's the peak, uh, I don't know, productivity, or you know, where's the maximum growth rate, or you know, I don't know, maybe there's like some medicine and you want it to be you know, the maximum effectiveness or something. So you might very well want to know what maxes and mins are, and those you can also do with derivatives later.